we're talking about the draft. This is the time where players can fill roster spots that they want to improve on with not spending a whole bunch of money. If you don't click your ticket to free agency, this is where your ticket can be punched and you can ride the train after he says all aboard because you might not have the money to buy the ticket, but I guarantee you, you will eventually. And this ticket will kind of be, you ever seen the Polar Express, Nate? Yeah. Where the ticket's just like floating in the air and then it just magically pops in the hand. That's going to be some teams on draft day. Now, I want to preface. Before we get into this first overall pick, I'm going to do a little skit before we get into it, you know, kind of like the pick is in type stuff. Last year, before the NFL draft, I thought C.J. Stroud was going number one overall. I thought C.J. Stroud was the best pick in that draft, the best player in the draft, the best quarterback in the draft. Even though I think the best quarterback in the draft is not the person who's projected to be number one overall, I will not make the same mistake as I did last year. Every okay. single person was saying Bryce Young was number one. Bryce Young was number one. So I don't want to make the same mistake. So therefore, I want to say that the first overall pick will be the person that everyone's saying the first overall pick is going to be. But let's look at it before we get there. Who has the number one overall pick in the draft team? Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears. I do not think... Now, but there's a lot of Chicago fans here. I don't think Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think Caleb Williams is the best player in the draft. But do the Chicago Bears need a quarterback in the first? Is this something that they need to take care of? So let's look at some stats before we get into it, okay? So there's two – well, I'll tell you stats just after we get There's two teams where I see Caleb Williams going to. The team that has the number one overall pick or the team that's about to trade for the number one overall pick. So before, you know, Roger Goodell gets up there and tells you the number one overall pick, a trade happens. The Bears get the phone call. There's a trade that they cannot resist. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you our first from this year. We're going to give you our first from next year. Maybe a second round to go with it. And we might give you a player like, hmm, someone we not be, might not be able to come to terms with for a while, a player like Kyle Pitts that we might be able to just throw away because we want to rebuild and we don't want to pay him all that money whenever it gets there. The Atlanta Falcons call the Chicago Bears. Hey, we're going to trade for the number one overall pick. There's for two fun. teams that need a quarterback, in my opinion. You got to the give Falcons us though. and the Raiders. You're gonna, but you're going to have to give up something. And more than that, if you want to give up a Devin Pitts, you, you're still going to have to give up a first-round draft pick. They will. They will. They will give up a first-round draft pick. They be, will. It's going to have to be something that's going to be sweet. You know, you got to you got to tickle my fancy. You can't just you – know, you can't take me to McDonald's. You got to take me to uh, Capitol Grill. You got to take me to – They'll State. figure it out. They'll figure it out. Now, if this trade does not happen, and the Bears keep the number one overall pick, and the pick is in right now, Nate, Caleb Williams, quarterback USC, is the number one player off the board. He's picked. I won't make the same mistake again. If this does not happen, this trade does not happen, the Falcons will trade for Justin Fields. Because there's there's no other scenario in my mind that says Caleb Williams to Atlanta, Caleb Williams to Chicago. If that happens, Justin Fields is going to go to either of those teams. If Caleb Williams goes to Chicago, Justin Fields in Atlanta. If Caleb Williams goes to Atlanta – Justin Fields stays in Chicago. But for me, I like to make bold predictions. I say Atlanta makes a trade. They need a quarterback. They trade up to the number one overall pick. Because guess what, Nate? Who who traded for the number one overall pick last, last draft? Do you know? Was it in Carolina that traded? It's Carolina. Do you know what division Carolina's in? AFC, NFC South. They're in the same division as the Falcons. Now, you look at somebody like, hey, this is my little brother in the division. But let's do something better than what they did. Bryce Young didn't have 3,000 yards pass, and he threw for 11 touchdowns and 10 picks. But we have somebody like Caleb Williams. We're going to one-up the Carolina Panthers. We're going to show him how to truly trade up for the number one overall pick and how it works out. Because I don't see Caleb Williams being super, super good in Chicago. I just can't see it. I can't see it. But if he goes to somewhere like Atlanta, maybe, maybe with that new system in place, he might just be something. But I don't think he's the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think he's – 
he's there yet. But let's let's go into some stats. Let's take Justin Fields oh, and Caleb oh. Williams, okay? Okay. Now, let's talk about when a quarterback snaps the ball. You yeah. have about three seconds to decide if you're going to throw the ball or you're going to run it or you're going to throw it away. You got three seconds, no more, no less, before somebody's going to eat you up in that pocket. You got three seconds to decide. You're going to run out. What are you going to do? Caleb Williams in 2023 in college, okay, he had a 3.21 second on average. That's how long it took for him to make a decision if he was going to throw it, run it, whatever. That's how long he takes the decision, okay? Let's look at Justin Fields. There's a lot of people saying Justin Fields holds the ball too long. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know the decision-making. You want to know the time Justin Fields takes to make that decision after the ball snaps? 3.23 seconds. Very similar in time, right? So if Justin Fields takes 3.23 seconds to decide whether he wants to throw it or run the ball, but Caleb Williams takes 3.21 seconds, not even very, very close, like just about the same. Why are we picking up another Justin Fields? I'm, I'm if they honest. take the same time to decide what they're going to do with the ball. Uh, well, okay, let me let me throw this out there. <coughs> Excuse me. We can't we can't really just tie into we're talking about a collegiate quarterback that's coming out of college where the yes. are a little bit different to an NFL quarterback. Yeah, you're that's, right. We, we we can't now nothing there's just no 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 shade at at, at Caleb Williams. Yeah. You haven't had a Miles Garrett coming out of you from that side, from that 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 jumps, that jumps the the, the that that knows the snap count that can really get bend over bend that hoop and, and just get you, or or Nick Bosa. You know you haven't had a Chris Jones uh, uh, or or Aaron Donald that's in your 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 that's in front of you that's pushing your guard and your center back into your your lap. You know so. One of the things that we got to also throw out there is that, you know, again, hey, Justin Fields, he played great towards the, the later part of the season. And the, the middle to the second half of the season, he played great. Now, the reality of it is, is that you're going to start all over again. Now, the Chicago Bears, if I'm not mistaken, that that fan base, they want to win and want to win now. They want to win and they want to win now. So, you're going to draft a quarterback in the likes of a Caleb Williams, which uh, there's, he, he's talented. But yet you got to start this process all over again. Matt Eberflus, his, he's on the hot seat right now. So you you draft the best you you draft the best available. If the dra- if the, the the trade is not there, you draft the best available. Best available, my opinion. This is, again, this is opinion of Nate Ness. This is again my opinion. Let's see if we got the same opinion. My opinion. The best available in the draft is either going to be the receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr. Who's the top offensive tackle? Joe Alt. Wait, wait, say that again? Joe Alt. You're going to, again, if you're not going to draft, if you're not going to draft the, the, again, you're going to draft the best available, it's going to be the best wide receiver or the, or the best offensive lineman because you need pieces to help Justin Fields be successful. I mean, you drafted him in the first round with a lot with the hopes of him to come in and, and just do some things. Yet, why not give him the the the, the, the suitable pieces he needs that'll help help him succeed and give him a coach that's going to help him understand and, and, and understand the game of football in at the NFL level. I'm telling you, this game it, it's it's literally night and day from college. Because you got to actually do a lot of studying. You got to know your opponent. You, the the game of chess. And again, this is the, from the words of a of a great coach that I played for, Bill Parcells. He said the game of football is a chess match within a chess match. And I promise you, I never understood what it meant until I probably got into my third year in the league when he said the game of football is a chess match within a chess match. You have to be able to see the game. Not just physically, but you got to see the game mentally. You got to you got to be able to break the game down from more from a mental standpoint because that's where you win. You your physical attributes is is what goes out there, but the winning aspect is literally from here. You have to know how to your you got to know your opponent. You got to know the ins and outs of your opponent, the defensive coordinator, the 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 the, the, the players around you, or whatnot. Okay, hey, 
Oh, snaps. Kevin Byer. Oh, yeah, he's a safety for, for, for the Tennessee Titans. Oh, no, no, he's actually playing for the Eagles now. So let's go ahead. Let's look at him. He likes to play middle field safety and whatnot. Now, he's very, very antsy and jump now. If I was to go ahead and give him a look and a pump to this to this backside and come back strong side, he's not going to get over there. You have to know your opponent. Hey, Darius Slay. He's actually really, really, really good playing off coverage, and he's good in his instincts and whatnot. Okay, so listen, if I'm going to throw a ball to the outside of comeback, I got to make sure it's pinpoint and me and the receiver are, are in sync with each other. Otherwise, Darius Slade, he's going to come out his back pedal, and he's going to take that six. You have to know your opponent. That's the mental aspect of the game, and you need to have a mental edge. That's the only thing with Justin Fields is that he does not you, – you have to be taught that. And you need somebody to help you acquire that because there are a lot of college quarterbacks that come into the game that aren't pro ready. I've seen one that was pro ready that, that he was just different. And that was Andrew Luck. But a lot of these quarterbacks, this is like one, one every 10 drafts that you got a quarterback that comes in and they're just ready to start. They won. Well, Patrick Mahomes. they and when you draft the number one overall, if you draft somebody number one overall, that should be the player that is best fitted to go ahead and be perfect yes, when they get up in the NFL. Definitely. That is exactly what you're looking for. You do not pick Caleb Williams number one overall and want Caleb Williams to progress. That's not what you – you say that he is number one overall because he is already the person that is the most fit to play quarterback in the NFL. He's the most fit. That's why they picked Bryce Young last year because they thought Bryce Young was the most fit quarterback to go ahead and lead a team to the playoffs. The Carolina Panthers, the Chicago Bears, if this happens, I don't think Caleb Williams – ah, man, I can't make that prediction. I don't think he's bad. Now, if we look at stats, we look at somebody – we took we you say college and, and NFL, you can't compare them to apples to oranges, and I agree with you. That's mm -hmm. the exact – point I'm making. If he is throwing, taking over three seconds to decide what to do with the ball in college, what is that number going to be in the NFL? Now, USC ranked out of 133 FBS teams, USC ranked 97th in the country from the, the number one being the best offensive line for sacks allowed and 133rd being the worst offensive line sacks allowed. They were 97th. Now, that's not because his O-line was terrible. That's not because they're playing stellar defenses in the Pac-12. No, 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 no. That's because Caleb Williams likes to run around the playground when he plays in that pocket. He likes to run around and, and try to show out and take over three seconds to decide what to do with the ball. And, and I have film if you want to watch it. I have film for every player, but I don't even know if we're going to be able to get to watch film. We might not have time. <laughs> Listen, I, I believe you. I believe you. In a sense, I'm telling you, I believe everything you're saying. This is one of the most interesting moments and interesting things in the draft when it comes down to, okay, the most scrutinized position, quarterback position, and then on top of that, the most scrutinized draft position being number one overall. You have to get this right. You got to get this right. Again, on my opinion, I'm not drafting a quarterback because, again, you got to start all over again. Matt Eberflus does not have – he has this year. It's either – Make it or break it this year. It's playoffs or you're done. You have the golden opportunity. Ryan Poles, listen, you have the number one draft pick. They're going to be fielding your call. You're going to be fielding calls for that draft pick. You can get a king's ransom for the number one overall draft because there's somebody that's desperate for a quarterback. Somebody is ready to smack it up, flip it, rub it down, and give it to you for that number one overall draft pick. You, got, you can do it. You have to, again, you have to make sure you get it right. Because if you don't get it right this time, there's a there's a, there's a, a possible, a high possibility that you're going to be unemployed. And when you bring in a, 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 a quarterback, a Caleb Williams, a rookie, who is not acclimated to the NFL game, and they have to learn the NFL game. They have to take their hits. They got to take their lumps. They got to go through that, that, that first year of, like, you know what, trying to figure it out. You don't have that. You don't have time. Time is a, a beautiful thing to have. But for the Chicago Bears, Matt Eberflus, Ryan Post, you don't have that, 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 that luxury. You don't have that luxury to have time. So stick with what you have in Justin Fields. Pick the pot. If you're not going to tr trade the draft pick away, 
pick the best available, Marvin Harrison Jr., or get the top O lineman. Because if I'm not mistaken, they have two picks in the top uh, top ten. They do. So you we're gonna get, get to those. You can get it. You can get a King's ransom. Come on, go, go ahead, go. We're gonna get to those. Okay, okay. So the Chicago Bears now have the number eight pick in the draft, and they have the number ninth pick in the draft. Okay, out but per my mock draft, per my mock draft, per my mock draft. They got three in the first. In the first. No, no, no. Per my mock draft, okay. they just tr- they just traded away the number one overall pick. Okay. Atlanta now has Caleb Williams. If Atlanta does not trade for the number one overall pick, Atlanta will get Justin Fields. I don't have a doubt in my ma- mind where Atlanta and Chicago don't have Caleb Williams or Justin Fields. I think that's going to happen. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. I just see it. I that's what I see. Now, Washington's on the clock. You have a team like the Raiders. You have a team like the Giants that need a quarterback desperately. I don't think the Giants pick up a quarterback. You just had Daniel Jones sign the most atrocious quarterback contract ever. He just committed armed robbery with the freaking contract he signed on the Giants. You you don't move on from Daniel Jones. You just signed a contract. You don't move on from a quarterback like that. The Raiders, on the other hand, bench Jimmy G. They had a rookie starting last season. They don't know what to do with their quarterback situation. Do the Raiders trade up to get a quarterback this round when this quarterback draft class is stacked, or do they try to hit it hard in the later drafts like the 49ers do with Brock Purdy? Or, or again, the New England Patriots did with Thomas Patrick Edward Brady. Or do they stay content with their pick? Now, the commanders have a chance in getting who I think is the best quarterback in this draft. Why trade it away? You just were told after Caleb Williams was drafted number one overall. You don't have to trade anything for this pick. You already got it. So the pick is in, Nate. Who do the commanders pick? Because they don't trade the draft pick. They pick Mr. 2023 Heisman winner, the man that we know is a video game character, Jaden Daniels. Because in my mind, this is the man that is most fit to play NFL quarterback. It's not Caleb Williams. It's Jaden Daniels. This man knows how what to do with the ball as soon as he gets it. Now, granted, he does have some of the best wide receivers in college. He does have that. Caleb Williams had some dang good wide receivers too, but I think I'm going to give the edge to Jaden Daniels. He knows what to do with the ball. If Caleb Williams wasn't a question, this is the guy that's getting drafted number one overall. If he wasn't in question, I can't make the same mistake again. I had C.J. Stroud being better than Bryce Young, and he went number two. I'm going to have Jaden Daniels being better than Caleb Williams, but he's going to go number two. I got to have that. I can't make the same mistake again. Now, Nate, we saw – I gave you stats earlier this year before the Heisman was picked. We know Jaden Daniels' ability. We know Jaden Daniels on the football field. And and yes, let's let's talk about let's talk about the weight. People are saying that Jaden Daniels is a little bit too heavy than he should be. But why? If he's playing like he's playing in college, why does weight matter? It doesn't matter if he's heavier than a quarterback than the regular quarterback. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. Know your role and shut your mouth because Jaden Daniels plays some dang good football. It doesn't matter. If he's playing like this, now, now, yes, okay, I misspoke. They're saying he's too light. You're right. I misspoke. I misspoke. Say it with your chest, Connor. They're saying he, I, I misspoke. I misspoke. But they're saying he's too light, which is one thing I have against Jaden Daniels. There's one thing. Now, I have film pulled up. I don't even think we're going to get to it because I don't think I'm going to pull up film to do the rest of these picks. Jaden Daniels, and it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. He will take a hit if the man sees a hit coming. He will take a hit. Now it could be a bad thing because he could get injured and people and teams don't want that. Teams don't want a quarterback that's always going to want to take a hit. But it also could be a good thing because he can run over some dudes. And look, what's a couple more pounds on Jaden Daniels going to do? It could slow him down, but hey. No, no, but the, but but wait, wait. It's not about just slowing him down. It's actually going to prepare him to take those hits because you know those DNs you haven't had a, a DN that's six foot six, two seventy, that can run a four four forty, come and hit you, and really hit you. So you gotta be physically prepared and physically, you know, ready for for that. Look, 
the game is mental and it's physical. You have to be mentally prepared, but you got to be physically prepared for the, the wear and tear that's going to be put on your body. I mean, I can tell you right now, my first year playing in the league um, in 09, I think it was like the 12th game of the year. Because, again, we played 13, well, 12, 13 games, uh, including the bowl game when I was in college. By the 12th game, I promise you, my body locked up on me. Like, my body was hurting. Because, again, I played preseason, four preseason games. And I had already played about 12 regular season games on top of the four. That's that's 16. Your body has to be prepared. You have to understand that this is not college no more. This is your job. You don't go to school and, and maintain a, a, a 2.0 so you can play. You actually go home and study your, your game tape, your opponent, you know your playbook, and, and that's how you get on the field. And you got to be physically in, in, in shape and mentally in shape. So, yeah, he's going to have to gain some weight because, listen, I, I'm not playing no more. There's some guys on there that's, that's some killers. You know, there's some guys on there that I, I'll be looking like, I'm glad I don't play the game no more. I'm telling you, you Aaron Donald's still him. Chris Jones, he's him. Dexter Lawrence, C.J. Mosley, you know what I'm saying? Bobby Wax. Again, you, you got Max Crosby. It, again, you have some guys that will come and bring that thing thing to you. You got Antoine Antoine Winfield Jr. The, like again, you got some people that's coming to 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 bring that thunder. That's gonna hit you with that thunder. You know what I'm saying? That thunder. <laughs> that yeah, for real. They gonna hit you with that. that I got you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. They're telling you, don't drop that thunder on because they gonna drop it on you. You know, so yeah, you got to be mentally and physically prepared to play the game because this is not this is not leisure no more. This is actually a job. Although I think the best player in this draft is Marvin Harrison Jr. These top three teams that are in this draft, mm -hmm. that is not what's fulfilling their needs as a football team. Mm -hmm. They cannot pick a wide receiver when these quarterbacks are available because they won't they won't be able to pick them when the time's there. They have to pick them now. They have to use their moment wisely. Now, Chicago Bears, they're not going out with the old and in with the new. Mm -hmm. You saw them kept, keep Eberflus. Now, they have until May to decide if they want to accept Justin Fields' fifth-year option. They have yep. until May. They are keeping the new and bringing in – I mean, keeping the old and bringing in the new to mm -hmm. pair with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not going out with the old and in with the new. They are per they are trying to find the perfect pair of the two, which is why they kept Eberflus. And they might – they might just might keep Jaden Daniels and trade away that number one overall pick. But, Nate – the next team's up. The next team's on clock. So they're they're it's the New England Patriots. Now I know Jack's watching. He's gonna be he you don't get Caleb Williams, you don't get Jaden Daniels. I'm sorry. But you might get somebody who's a bit might be a bit better in the NFL than these two. Right, this right. guy knows exactly what to do. And it's amazing. I was watching film earlier. He knows exactly what to do when the ball is snapped. He does not take a lot of time to decide if that ball needs to be thrown. Shoot, if he sees that his wide receivers aren't going to freaking run and and they're 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 locked up, you know what he's going to do? He's going to use his legs, Nate. And even though he's not a Caleb Williams, he's not a Jaden Daniels. Legs aren't everything in a football quarterback. He's got this right here, Nate. He's very smart. He knows how to read. Now, the New England Patriots select the third overall pick. Drake May, quarterback from North Carolina. Okay. Right. I don't see a better pick here. I don't see a better pick here. This oh is literally what they need right here. Now, you might think – there's a lot of people that think Drake May is the best quarterback in this draft class, and he is the best transition from college to NFL. And I might I might tend to agree with him, and, and he might be better than Caleb Williams. All right. I, I think Jaden Daniels is number one. I just – I love his gameplay. I love the way he is. But there's nobody more consistent as a quarterback in this draft than Drake May. He is very, very consistent. Now, I was going to pull up a game where he played Syracuse. He threw 44 passes, completed 30 – what did he complete? 30, 33 of them. He had 442 yards passing, 55 rushing yards on 14 attempts. That's almost 500 yards of scrimmage and four touchdowns, Nate. Yes, and his footwork, his footwork is a little worrisome. But whenever you have brain and you know exactly what you're about to do, 
footwork, that can be taught. You're not drafting Drake May number one overall. You're not saying – you're taking a chance on him saying you want him to transfer. But you're not making the big number one overall pick like the Chicago, the Chicago Bears are doing. And, yeah, uh-huh. it's, it's Syracuse is not saying much. Okay. But that's just the film I picked. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. One of the things that we're, we're, we're failing to realize and failing to uh, address – is that when these young quarterbacks are coming into the league, you have to have an offense, an offensive coordinator that can actually really relate to them. They have to to look at things that they were good at in college and, and apply them to the offense that they're running now. And then you have a you have to have a lot of quarterbacks, excuse me, these quarterbacks when they come into the league, it's really hard because these defenses are a little bit more exotic. The, again, the time you got to have better pocket presence because you got to learn your pocket presence. And from there, you got to learn, okay, when the team is showing you a too high and they're holding it, holding it, holding it, pre-snap, then post-snap, you have to know where you're going with the ball. They have to learn. Again, it's learning the position all over again because this is not USC playing University of Arizona. This is Chicago Bears opening up Monday night football playing against the Green Bay Packers, playing against a team that, again, they have a great pass rush, uh, a good secondary, a lockdown corner in Jahi or Alexander. They have a solid, uh, a solid defense. On, and on the other side, they have quarterback Jordan Love, who's coming into his own. You have to be able to adapt and, and, and learn the game, and you got to learn the game quickly. You got to have a quarter, excuse me, a coordinator and a quarterback coach who is going to really pull you along gradually, and not just give you the keys to the Bentley. Hey, uh, listen, this is driver's training. Until you're ready for me to be not like, you know, for me not to like, you know, be right there next to you. Like, you know, as you're driving, you, we're going to we're going to go the speed limit. And we, we I'm going to get like, you know what, organize plays and then call plays that, that are going to put you in a position to succeed until you start to gradually see the game and the game slows down for you. That's the that's the aspect right there. I think that this is the perfect pick for num- for the okay. number number third overall pick. But so what happened to Mac Jones? The, what's gonna happen to him? Yeah, what's gonna happen? They gonna ship him off either somewhere or keep him till his rookie deal expires. I mean, I don't, I don't see him being the answer there. He won the answer the past couple of years. He was good his rookie season, went to a Pro Bowl. But other than that, I mean, Bailey Zappi was starting over him a couple of games. Western K- Kentucky legend. I mean. But let's keep going. We 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 gotta keep we gotta get moved through these quick. Best player in the draft. Arizona Cardinals are they're on the clock. They get a call from somebody who just acquired the number eight overall pick in the draft. Now the Arizona Cardinals did this last year. They traded the number three, third overall pick to who, Nate? To the Houston Texans to go ahead and draft Will Anderson Jr. Had a great year. Had a great year. Defensive rookie of the year. In my mind, the Cardinals are not done rebuilding. This is not the draft that they're going to use to capitalize. They're going to keep acquiring that draft capital. So the team that just acquired that number eight overall pick is going to trade up. The Chicago Bears trade up to number four and get the best player in this draft class, Marvin Harrison Jr. Now. Ryan Poles is going to be on that that phone, and he's going to be like draft day, like I told you the other week, the other day. He's going to call a – he's going to be bluffing hard. He's going to have a pair of twos, but he's playing against a Royal Flush right now, Nate, but he cannot make it known that he's only got a pair of twos against a Royal Flush. You have to use your bluff and say, hey, I have the number one overall pick in this draft. I can draft the best – Quarterback prospect, quote, since Andrew Luck. I can draft him. But what are you going to give me for that? They get this draft capital, and they trade up. They draft, in my opinion, the best player in this draft class at number four, Marvin Harrison Jr. The person that has been the best wide receiver prospect of this decade, but since Fit Larry Fitz, Calvin Johnson, and Randy Moss, he's the fourth best wide receiver prospect in NFL history. And we're not going to let that go. Chicago should be chomping at the bits to trade up and get this man to help out who I think they're going to keep. 
Justin Fields, accept his fifth year option and go ahead and might go to a playoff this year. But and he's better than his dad. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. He'll probably have a better career. Yes. Yes, he will. Now you still have the number nine pick, Nate. So keep that in mind when I get to number nine. Okay. Keep that in mind when I get to number nine. Drake may better than Jaden Daniels. Okay, you can say that. I I like Drake May. I don't I, I um, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. Number five team. They just hired a, a head coach. They just hired the man that won the national championship, Mr. Jim Harbaugh. The Chargers signed right. somebody that is going to turn their franchise around. Somebody that's never been under 500 in his entire career with the team. Never. So let's go ahead and take someone that has been a below 500 this past season, and let's bring them over the top. But who does – Jim Harbaugh won. Who does Jim Harbaugh go into influence in making this decision? The Chargers don't trade this pick. They keep it. Uh, they they keep, keep it in their back pocket. They keep this. And they get a dude that might just be the second best player in this draft class. Somebody who's a little light for his position, but just might be perfect for this Chargers offense. The pick is in, Nate. The Los Angeles Chargers with the fifth overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. Pick Brock Bowers, tied in out of Georgia. I did not see that one. I did not see that. They one. picks now a tight end player for the Chargers has been an issue in the past. You know they traded away Hunter Henry to the or they didn't trade him away. He they didn't resign him. He went to free agency. Went to the Patriots. They had Jared Cook one year. I think old Jared Cook after the Saints had him. They still have answers. They still have questions. They have needs for this tight end position. They need somebody like Brock Bowers, and you don't let Brock Bowers go. But you have the you have the question: Do I take a tight end right here, or do I go ahead and take the best offensive lineman in this draft? I take the best offensive lineman. I take the best offensive lineman. I have to take the best offensive lineman. I have to protect Justin Herbert. I have to give him the protection he needs. Protect Justin Herbert. Resign Keenan Allen, restructure the deals of Keenan Allen and, and some other guys. Get Austin Eckler to come back. You you find you get the offensive line uh, situated with 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 Justin uh, excuse me Justin Herbert. Again, you're competing in the AFC West. You're competing against Patrick Mahomes, the the Las Vegas Raiders, the Denver Broncos, and depending on what they do, you you have to make sure your offense your your, your quarterback is always standing upright. You get the best offensive lineman that's available in the draft. No, you don't. This 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 is the number five pick. You get somebody that's going to be able to protect your quarterback. I don't mind their O-line right now, which is why I picked this pick. Now, if their O-line was atrocious, I would go with the best over uh, the best tackle in the draft, which is we're about to see in just a second who that is. In my mind, Brock Bowers and this Chargers offense would be electric. No pun intended. He would be a electric in this Chargers offense because a tight end question is something that they have not been able to get an answer to for a minute now in Los Angeles. Okay, okay. okay. So okay. we'll see what happens. I think he goes to the Chargers. They might draft the tackle here. I think, they, I think that's the best thing you do. You dra You have to draft somebody that's going to protect your quarterback. You Justin Herbert got abused this season. If he's going to be your franchise – you have to protect and value your franchise. You're right. That they might pick that. But look, let's go to the next pick. Number six pick, New York Giants got it. They just inked a deal with Daniel Jones, Trocious contract. Yeah, he's stuck. He's stuck. He's, he's stuck, stuck they're, there. They're stuck. They're stuck. But you got to get somebody who can protect him. So, therefore, I have the Giants drafting the best tackle, the best lineman in this draft. Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. Now, Joe Alt is – I have his film – he is fast for an O lineman. He runs a four nine forty as of right now. He runs less than a five, which is insane for a lineman. And if you see, he is like Trent Williams, and in, in, in a college Trent Williams. This man will go from the tackle spot and run across the field like Trent Williams did against Green Bay that one game where he, you know, that popular clip I'm talking about, and just destroy who was ever in front of him. Mm -hmm. And, for, and Trent Williams is great. I, I can compare him to Trent Williams. I think he looks a lot like Trent Williams. 
this guy I think is going to pan out. Now you have somebody like Evan Neal who you drafted a couple years back who you thought was going to pan out. I think Evan Neal's from Alabama. He just hasn't been the tackle they want. He hasn't been the tackle they, they're looking for. But you can have Evan Neal maybe still be a starter or have him as a backup. Joe Alt, if he's still on the board when this pick goes, you have to pick him up. You have to. He cannot go past this pick. And therefore, the Giants select Joe Alt at number six. Okay. Okay. Let me give me your seven pick. This gonna be Let's go number seven. Now, let's, let's talk about wide receivers here, Nate. You have somebody like Marvin Harrison Jr., which is off the board. But let's mm-hmm. look at the next ones. You have da- uh, Dallas, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. No, no, that, we don't say we don't say we we just say Malik Neighbors because it was it, the, the whole year it was Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors, the one A, one and one A. Let's go. But the it. Titans are on the board. Do they want an electric, explosive player like Malik Neighbors? Now there's a there's a bit of an issue with Malik Neighbors. He's got butterfingers, Nate. He's not very consistent when it comes to to possession catching. Now, I he's very aggressive. He's explosive, like I said. He's a guy that you're going to be third down and 12. You might throw a wide receiver screen, and the man's going to score you a touchdown on the play. He might be that guy. But I think Malik Neighbors is better than this wide receiver that I have the Titans picking. Titans are on the clock, and there's not a better fit in my mind to, get, to pick the possession king himself, Roma Dunze out of Washington. Oh, my God. Roma Dunze. You don't pick Malik Neighbors. He's got better fingers. He's very explosive. I like Malik Neighbors. I think he's better than Roma Dunze when he catches the football. Roma Dunze is very – he's way more consistent than Malik Neighbors. I have to give Roma Dunze. The Titans pick him up. They want to, They picked up Traylon Burks not that long ago. Wasn't the man they wanted. They're going to pick somebody that was going to pan out. They pick Roma Dunze. He goes number seven. To the Tennessee Titans. This mock draft is actually kind of funny. Okay. Well, let's keep going. going. Let's go. Number eight. Now, we have just stated that the Bears had number eight. They traded up to number four. The Cardinals sit at number eight. They're still rebuilding. We just talked about a very explosive player, a man that's going to score you a touchdown on third and ten. You throw a screen to. Arizona Bay. Cardinals are on the clock. Mm-hmm. And they pick the next, next best wide receiver, Malik Neighbors, at number eight. I think this is a good addition to their team. I think they're still in rebuilding mode. So next draft, they might just capitalize next draft. But this draft is not the answer. So you get your draft capital. You draft Malik Neighbors. You're content with Malik Neighbors on your team. And you just keep going and keep trucking. Because I think the Cardinals have another pick this draft. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So you 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 get another pick. You're You're content. And you pick Malik Neighbors. Now, you could have picked Marvin Harrison Jr., but you pick someone explosive like Malik Neighbors, and you're content there. And then next draft, 2025, Nate, you go all balls to the walls. If I'm if I'm Arizona and I have all this draft capital, I pull a Chicago Bears playbook and go all balls to the walls. Okay. All right, let's see mine. But guess who has number nine, Nate? Chicago. The Chicago Bears. Do they pick a quarterback at nope. number nine? Nope. Because you, if you're going to pick a quarterback, you pick a quarterback with the top, top five, top, top three quarterback in, in the draft, or, or excuse me, top three pick, top three, top five pick. So no, what what's the best defensive player alive? Let, uh, Let's talk about it. You just picked the best offensive player in this draft. Okay, we've had eight straight offensive players. Now you have a chance to pick the best defensive player in the draft, the best linebacker prospect in this draft. You pick. Number nine, you don't trade it away. You go ahead and pick the versatile, the man who can play off the line, the man who can play off the ball, the man who can play back. Dallas Turner, linebacker from Alabama. That's You've pick just up. picked the That's best pick. offensive player and the best defensive player in, the, in yep. your draft That's class. Pick. If That's I'm the Chicago Bears and I'm Ryan Poles, I'm not, I'm not unhappy. I'm happy because I just picked the two best players on offense and defense out of this draft class, and we're about to go to the playoffs. We're about to be the Chicago freaking Grizzly Bears, and we're about to show people who's boss, even though we didn't pick Caleb Williams like everybody was saying. But we just picked something better, and we're going to the freaking playoffs, baby. Okay. Now, what you got at 10 to close it out? Because, you know, we got to hurry to close it. We got to hurry up. Number 10, Aaron Rodgers. 
I think it was like the fourth play of the game towards Achilles, week one. Wasn't back for the playoffs like people had hoped. They didn't even make the playoffs, so it didn't matter. He's aging, Nate. I think he's going to be 41 this next season. He's aging. You need somebody who can protect this aging quarterback. Why you pick somebody that can sit behind Aaron Rodgers and learn something. Now, I don't think you draft a quarterback at 10. Okay. you got to have somebody that protects Aaron Rodgers. You might trade a quarterback. If if Washington picks up Jaden Daniels, hey, I might trade for Sam Howell and make Sam Howell sit behind Aaron Rodgers a couple seasons, make him learn like we they did in Green Bay. We take a page out of their book, Sam Howell becomes something great in New York. You need somebody who's going to protect Aaron Rodgers for the time being. He cannot tear his Achilles again. You take the next best guy off this list, offensive lineman-wise. You take Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. Okay, I can, I can deal with that. I can this is a big dude. He's a big dude, but he's protective. He is great. Now, I don't I have to look at his stats. I don't know his stats for sure, but I was watching his film, and he is he's very protective, Nate. I like, I like him a lot. Yeah, I'm – I'm, I'm content with them. If I was the Jets, I'd pick Olu Fashanu up, say, hey, you're going to – this is your mission. I want you to make sure this man does not tear his Achilles again because he's the only way we can go to the playoffs again in New York. Yeah, you got you can You cannot have him tear his Achilles because that O-line did not do a good job of, of it last year. So we're going to pick you up at number 10, and you're going to show why you're the number 10th pick in this 2024 NFL draft. Well, let's talk about defensive players because right, that's yeah. who's going in this next pick. So the pick is in, Nate. The Vikings don't trade their pick. They think this is the, the best available player. Mel Kuyper will have it as his best available player, and they will pick him up. Yeah, Mel Kuyper. Leatu Latu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Lay, lay, lay at something. Leatu Latu. Okay. Yeah, Nate. You, you know, you were in college and in the Pac-12. Like this guy was. So he was at Washington, transferred from Washington to UCLA, had a really good season, was at the Senior Bowl. Didn't He practiced, didn't play the game because there comes a time where practice means the most for scouts. If The game's kind of for the fans, so the people that are like punching their ticket to the first round don't normally play the game because their draft stock's not going to increase – really much if they do really good in the game because scouts already know what they can do because of the practice. Right. So this guy had several practices at the senior bowl. I don't know if it would have raised his draft stock. I would, I didn't do the, I didn't do the mock draft before the senior bowl. So I don't know. Um, I think this is the best available, available player for the Vikings. Think about it. Daniil Hunter had a great season this year. Mm -hmm. He was all, I think he had 16 and a half sacks. Very, very good. So you pair someone like Daniil Hunter, then you have Latu on the other side of him, and you're in for a recipe of destruction. I like that. Now this is this is what the the Saints pick. No, this is the Vikings. The Vikings. The Vikings. Yes. Pick. I gave you I, that whole preface of Kirk and Jay Jettas. And yeah, you know, I, I, please forgive me. Now, when we're talking about the Vikings, their main thing is that they have to resign Kirk. They're there for them to be successful. They're probably going to have to, for them to be successful, excuse me, it's not the probably, they're going to have to re sign Kirk Cousins because he is the, he's the, the engine of this team, the heart of this team. Um, but again, reloading on defense, this is the thing that's the, this is the thing that's important. I want people to understand this. And I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm defensively biased, but this is the reality of it. If it's, the, the name of the game is you score more points than the other team. That's how you win. You got to score more points. If you have a defense that does not surrender points to the opposing team, that gives your team more chances to win, more chances, you know, to go and, and have the ball more and, and create for your offense. So reloading on defense is always going to be important. So if they're going to, you know, like get this offensive line, excuse me, this outside linebacker, you know what, and he provides a spark to this defense, then get him. You know, again, the draft right now, this time of the year is one of the most ex exciting, but yet it's hard and difficult time because you have a draft room and you never know who's going to pick who when they're on the clock. You never know. Teams make trades. 
left and right. There's a lot of business that's done in that war room, the draft room, as they call it, the war room. So you have to literally, it's the, it's the, it's the most exciting time, but it's the hardest time because, again, watch the New England Patriots trade with the, with the, the Pittsburgh Steelers this past draft, and they drafted the tackle from the University of Georgia. You know who was primed to draft him, that tackle from Georgia? The New York Jets. The Jets were primed to, ta- to, to draft him. And mind you, they're in the same division. Same division. They was not going to give that draft pick <laughs> to the Jets. You know, and that's the, that's the most interesting thing about it. So it's like, you know, hey, exciting and exciting, but yet it, it, it's angering. Like, you know, you get angry during the draft. So I like this pick, right? I love this pick. That's good. And 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 Jack said that Daniel Hunter might not stay. And if he doesn't, this would be a good replacement for him. Yeah. I was thinking of them as a pair, but if he leaves, good replacement, whatever. It works either way, in my opinion. But you want to say the Patriots draft, you know, up to get a tackle in the first round. They also drafted somebody named Cole Strange. Not to put disrespect on Cole Strange's name, but he was drafted like 24th overall. In a in a in a draft that he should have been fell to like the fifth round, is what many many people were saying. Like the Rams were looking at him, but they were like, we weren't looking at him till day three. And I was like, and, the, and he might he might be good, Jack. I don't know his stats. If you wanna if you wanna put your input on that, he might be good. But Nate, let's go to the next pick. The Denver Broncos have the next pick. Right, let's right. talk about the Denver Broncos situation before we get into it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have Sean Payton, who came in as a head coach, trying to turn things around. He very much disrespected Nathaniel Hackett and Nathaniel Hackett's tenure in Denver. He said it was the worst head coaching job he's ever seen in his life. So he came to Denver trying to turn things around. Now, it is just about 100% that Denver will be parting ways with Russell Wilson. Mm Mm-hmm. They're, they're, I don't see a world where Russell Wilson stays. No, 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 no. Sean Payton doesn't like him. And and Sean Payton has to get somebody that is better. Russell Wilson wasn't bad in the beginning of the season, and it just got worse. But he wants somebody that he can mold and shape. Like he did Drew Brees back in 2006. His, his own pick. His own. He wants his own pick. Now, even though he didn't draft Drew Brees, he brought Drew Brees to New Orleans. Yeah. And in a world that was his own pick, he didn't pick him in the draft, but he picked him in free agency. Yeah. So, Nate, I don't like this pick, but I see something in this player that Sean Payton loves, like a little Tootsie roll lollipop, where if he gets to the center, he will get that Tootsie Roll. (laughs) So, Nate, the pick is in for the Denver Broncos. And who does Sean Payton want? Who does Sean Payton pick? Of course, it's the GM's decision at the end of the day. But I think the Broncos pick J.J. McCarthy, QB out of Michigan. I I don't like J.J. McCarthy as a draft prospect this high. But there is Things of J.J. McCarthy that can be almost related to Drew Brees. And then if Sean Payton gets his hands on that, who knows what J.J. McCarthy will be. Right, right, right. And Jack said he's going to faint. Now, I don't like J.J. McCarthy this high. I think J.J. McCarthy is system quarterback at Michigan. But there's something in him where I think it just just makes sense. It just makes sense. I don't I like think he's better than Bo like Nix. I don't I think he's better than Michael Penix. I, I, I think he I, I think that's a good pick. I mean, for what you hit everything on you hit the you hit the nail square for what uh Sean is looking for in itself. That's a perfect pick. Okay, the perfect pick. What you got next? Oh, he's better than Bo Nix. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get next. I just wanna say one more thing with Sean Payton. He does stuff that is unpredictable. Nobody would have thought that he would have brought Drew Brees to New Orleans. There were two teams in the entire league that wanted Drew Brees. Miami 
in New Orleans. And we just got lucky. Yeah, you got lucky. And it, it, it show, hey, listen, that was a big pickup. It was big. And there are more teams that want J.J. McCarthy than two. I can assure you that. But I yeah, don't know if there's point. more than two teams that want him in the first round. We're going to see. That's but next, point. we're going to see. We're going to see. Next, Nate, you have a division, a division rival after the Broncos. The Las Vegas Raiders are deciding who they want to take. Mm -hmm. A quarterback was just picked up. We've had only two defensive players picked up at this point. Yeah. I think. Yeah, two. Do they go defense or do they stick with the trend? Now you think of people like Darren Waller left. Josh Jacobs is in free agency. What do they want? Are there a, a good enough running backs to where the Raiders can pick them up in the first round? Now I love Jonathan Brooks for, on Texas. I love him in Las Vegas. I don't think Jonathan Brooks is a day one guy. Now, there is a world where the Raiders trade up in day two to get Brooks, and I think he will be fantastic on the Raiders if that were the case. But let's look at another Texas player, Nate. Let's look at another dominant Texas player who was very, very good, even though they didn't win, really good against getting pressure against Michael Penance in that game. Let's talk about Byron Murphy, the Ooh, second DT out of Texas. Good pick. Um, now – I was debating having somebody pair up with Max Crosby. Now, I don't know the Raiders the Raiders depth chart. Let me look it up real quick. Max Crosby. You ha Max Crosby is good enough on his own. You don't have to have somebody on that other side. So to have one side of your line just tearing through stuff would be phenomenal. Because right now they have Jerry Tillery and – I don't even know how to pronounce that name, but Bilal, I don't know. Nichols, like two guys, I don't even know their stats. Two guys, I, I usually research a lot more on these dudes, and I should already know them, but because I don't know really good D tackles on the Raiders, I thought Byron Murphy was a good pick, and I still think he will be very good. I think it's a, it's a great pick, and I explain to you why. They use, the Raiders have to win with defense. Every team, you got to win with defense. And you're in the AFC West. Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback there. Justin Herbert's a quarterback in that division. As of right now, Russell Wilson's still a quarterback in that division. You have to prepare yourself to go out there, and, and you need a defense that's going to be able to compete and shut, you know, give trouble to these opposing quarterbacks and opposing offenses. I like this pick. What you got? What's, what's next? You all, you own something tonight, Connor. You oh, tonight. am I? Now let's talk. And that is a good thing you just pulled out. AFC West. Antonio Pierce came out. They said, "What is going to be your game plan for this season?" You know what he said? We're playing the Patrick Mahomes game. Exactly. exactly. So he's he's got to be a defensive pick right here. Murphy's may be the quick. He might be. Yeah, he, he may be the quickest D tackle in the uh, in the draft. But, Nate, this is my favorite pick. I have been saying this before the Senior Bowl, before the Combine, before all this. This guy is going to the Saints. I saw him in college, and I love him. I love the way he plays. And, look, we're not drafting a tackle this year. We're not drafting a tackle. We can find a tackle. We'll, we'll do something to get a tackle. It won't be in the first round. Okay. Hear me out, Nate. Cameron Jordan, he's an older. He's old. He's getting old. He's like 34 he's as of right up. now. He's, he's getting, getting up there. He's slowly – now, he kind of took a big digress this season. He he hit hard. Like, it was bad. But DeMario Davis is still kicking. That dude is still 34, but he's still kicking. I don't know how he does it. He must, he must take his Flintstone gummies every day and eat his Wheaties. Now, he's doing something right. But, Nate, this guy will be the next Cameron Jordan if we can get our hands on him. I was watching film, and he was pushing linemen into the – not even tackling them – he was so strong. He was pushing Lyman into the quarterback to sack the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, Nate, I'm the pick is in for the New Orleans Saints, and if I'm the GM, there's this guy that's probably the best available right now. I'm taking Jared Verse defensive end out of Florida State. Give it to me. Give it to me. Again. The New Orleans Saints pick him up. I like that. And you're right, because you're, it's at that time of the year where – the tide is 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 changing. You know, one thing that um that we can't escape 
players can't escape, and that's in all division or excuse me, all sports: football, basketball, baseball, track and field, tennis, golf. There's this thing called father time, and it catches up to you. You're not gonna be able to to move as fast as you used to. You know, have as much power and and, and you get off and whatnot. And and again, it's time to replace. And even, well, I wouldn't necessarily say replace, but it's time to. Because Cam Jordan can still play good football. He can mentor um, this young man and, and teach him the ins and outs of the game and whatnot. So that's a great pick. I have to give it to you. That's a great pick. If he's still there, though. Now, yeah, Jack still- did say he'd be stunned if he's still there. I just I don't know if he's the best player for any of the teams above the Saints, which is why I have him fall on the 14. Right, right, right. I just I think Latu is the answer for the Vikings. Uh, the Chicago Bears pick up Dallas Turner, who's the best defensive player in the draft, arguably. And then I don't see the Raiders picking up Jerry yeah. first. So we'll see. I hope we get I hope we get no tackle, no tackle this year. I will cry if we pick a tackle this year. If I see a tackle, I will cry. I don't want to tackle. So let's get to our next pick. I trade out and take Trice. I don't know who Trice is. You're going to have to uh, uh, elaborate on that. I don't know. You're going to have to elaborate on that. But let's go to our next pick, number 15. It's the Colts. Coincidentally enough, the people we beat in the Super Bowl to get our first Super Bowl for our franchise. Mm -hmm. Tracy Porter hit that pick six on Peyton Manning. Get the chills, Nate. Imagine it. Imagine it. Get 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 the chills. Yes, it's happening. Washington D.E. I don't know. I have to look at the Washington D.E. I don't know if I have him in the first round, but let's keep going. The Colts are on the clock. Oh. I, I had a little bit of – I was thinking, you know, I, I Michael Pittman, I'm almost certain, is a free agent. I don't think he's re-signed. And I, think I, that, um, I think Jonathan Taylor is a free agent too, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I thought offense, offense, offense. There's, there's no way you don't pick an offensive player. But then I got to thinking, how good could the Colts really be if they picked up this one guy? There is a position that has not been drafted yet. There's many. There's a couple of positions that haven't been drafted yet, but there's one in particular where you saw a couple teams in the top ten pick this position last year, and it okay. paid out tremendously. New England Patriots was one of them. Seattle Seahawks was one of them. Let me go to... Terry and Arnold, cornerback out of oh, Alabama. Cornerback from Alabama. Yeah, yeah, he was good. He was a dog. Now, the Colts pick up a cornerback. I, I I know you may, you might disagree with me. They might pick an offense here. I think Pittman is a free agent. Thank you. I thought so. And maybe Jonathan Taylor, like Nate said. I don't know. Okay. I, I honestly think there, there comes a time where you say, okay, we can rebuild – with the next picks in the draft. But there is not going to be a player like this unless we just strike gold. That's yeah. going to be in these next couple days. So there's no time like the present, Nate. You have to take the best available player no matter who it is because you don't want anybody. Like you have a couple – uh, you have a divisional opponent the next two picks. If you let your divisional rival pick a player – and he ends up becoming a dog, you're going to sit in your room, you're going to get in the fetal position and cry in the closet. Yeah, so you yeah. have to make sure you – there's no time like the present. You have to make sure you pick this pick. And that's why I have Tyrion Arnold go, go that's to right. the Colts. That's a good pick. That's a, I, can't, I can't disagree with that one. That's a good pick. Let's see what you got next. Okay, next. Um, I saw this guy at the Senior Bowl. He was pretty, he was pretty good. Uh, there were some times where I was like, eh, you know, he's got some stuff to work on. But – now, that's why he's not the first one of his position picked. So Seahawks are on the board. They, you know, Gino has that team friendly contract where um, it's easy to trade them. It's easy to do whatever they want with them if if that had to happen. Yeah, McKinstry, I had him in the first. I'll tell you this: I had him in the first round, but I took him off, and I'll tell you next week why I took him off. We'll, we'll get to that. But um, they don't know who they're. Not they don't know. Gino will probably start, but they have a team friendly deal if Gino doesn't work out because he's kind of 
yeah, it's been inconsistent in his career. You just don't know when something like that happens. He could be back to old Gino. But regardless, you want somebody who's going to protect whoever in that spot. Now, the Seahawks drafted Mississippi State's own Charles Cross in the top ten a couple years back. Well, let's get another tackle this draft. Let's fortify that O-line. Give me Tyler Guyton, tackle out of Oklahoma. Because what that's going to do is it's it's going to protect the quarterback, but it's also going to allow Seattle to get back to their bread and butter. Seattle's formula for winning has always been defense and running the ball. That's perfect. That's perfect. And and th- and that's exactly what I was going to go for. You have two, and maybe three. I don't even know if Macintosh counts, Rob. I, I'm sorry. I don't think he does. You have two really good. Uh, Kenneth Walker the third turned out phenomenal. Very, mm-hmm. very, very good. And then you have uh, Zach. I don't even know. Is it Charbonnet? Charbonnet. I think, yeah. You have those two guys who who. Who are pretty good in my opinion. I would not mind that one two punch on my team. Gotcha. Got but you. the only reason you can keep them doing what they're doing is to have the O line to protect them and make sure that they can get into the holes mm-hmm. necessary to make those long runs. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have an O tackle there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna he's spoiling my picks. He's spoiling my picks. He's spoiling Let's go. my picks. Next pick. Okay. Jacksonville Jaguars are up. I don't have any trades in these next. I told you I don't have any trades. Oh, yeah, you don't have no trades. Jacksonville Jaguars are next. I kind of debated uh, Calvin Ridley if he stays. Maybe pick a wide receiver here. Trevor Lawrence has had a he, – he's been – I think he's still the best quarterback of that draft class in 2021. But he's had some trouble, especially this year. It feels like his offensive line is getting worse which is why he seems like he's getting worse. Mm-hmm. And the only way to fix that is to pick up another offensive line. I don't have a tackle going here. I don't have a guard going here. I have the best center in the draft going to Jacksonville, Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon. Oh, because okay. this okay. way, this way, you know Trevor Lawrence, if this center pans out like we think he is because he's a first-round draft pick, you're not going to have barely any 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 bad snaps. You're not going to get as many pressures if he's the center we think he is. And that will help the Jaguars not lose five games in a row where they don't go to the playoffs. Miss the playoff. But elevate them to the playoff standard that they were before. Okay, Okay, let's keep going. Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. Uh, Joe Burrow got injured, you know. I want to hear this one. Joe, Joe, and and there's a thing where T. Higgins, we trade him. We sign a long contract with them. There, there's a world where they have said that he's going to be our franchise player. Now you think, why isn't Joe Burrow or Jamar Chase your franchise player? Joe Burrow's on a contract already, and Jamar Chase is still on his rookie deal. So Jamar Chase cannot be your franchise player because he does not have that franchise contract. So T. Higgins, although if you want to trade him, keep him, whatever, you're not drafting a wide receiver here. You keep the trend going. You had the first two picks, B.O. Lyman. You keep the trend going. Protect Joe Burrow even more. You had some injuries on that O-line. Well, let's fix it. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Talies Fuaga, OT out of Oregon State. Yeah. You don't just protect Joe Burrow. You make sure that he can cover the injuries. If he doesn't become a starter this year, he can cover the injuries on that O-line you've had trouble with in the past, and you take him first round. That's perfect right there, protecting your franchise in regards to Joe Burrow. That's perfect. That's perfect. And if, if they, they trade T. Higgins, they can get more draft capital. Exactly. Draft whoever exactly. they want. Right. Yes. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we got three more picks. And these are these are some fun picks. The Rams. Now, this is one where I was like, this is going to – there's usually, usually teams like to pick what they need in the first round. This might be a need for this the Rams. It might not be a need for the Rams. But I thought that I could see this happening. They drafted Stetson Bennett last year in the draft, like fourth, fourth, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, you probably know, fourth this round, somewhere around there. Stetson Bennett, okay in the preseason. Well, you have a dude that has just about as much experience as Stetson Bennett, but arguably even better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had the Rams picking Bo Nix quarterback out of Oregon, but 
But, 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 but Matthew Stafford, you know, he had a, he had a good second half of the season. You don't know if he's going to go back to how he performed in that first half. Okay. To get someone like this a cushion, and Bo Nix with his experience, yes, Stetson Bennett, you know, didn't work out. You see how Bo Nix plays. I think that just picking him up right here might be the best pick for the Rams. Jack doesn't like it. And I could be – I could be. he might fall to, to day two like Will, Le, Will Levis. It could happen. But we're going to see. Okay. Okay. I like that one. I like that one. I like that. Next. Like. Next. The Steelers are on the clock. And I had I had a, a, wow. all this stuff. No. Are they are they picking up Russell Wilson? Are they picking up Justin Fields? Are they gonna get because they need a quarterback? Whatever they do, they need a quarterback. He's brutal. I will read your report after the show. They need a quarterback. Are they gonna get one for free agency? Try to trade? Are they gonna draft one, Nate? Well, who's the next big quarterback up on this list? Who's gonna be the guy that was a Heisman finalist? Who's gonna be the guy that I could see in a Steelers uniform, Michael just Pennick. like somebody like Michael Vick? Oh yeah, I'm glad you said it. Michael Penix. It's Michael Penix is going to the Steelers. Michael he's Penix. a Steeler baby. He's a Steeler baby, and he's going to the Steelers. He's going to be the second little Mike Vick little tenure they had, but he's going to be better than I Mike don't, Vick. Uh, he's going to be better yeah, than Mike Vick. Let's put okay. The last two picks. Let's put an asterisk by him because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you we, don't. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen when the new the new league year begins on March thirteenth, but. I like him, but let's put an asterisk by him. We uh, can do a mock it. draft 2.0 if we want okay. to. Okay. But the Steelers drafting Michael Penix, Michael Penix in a Steelers uniform just looks nasty to me. Nasty. Okay. And I like it. I like it. Because, look, look, you don't have as much pressure in that quarterback position. You have the mm-hmm. least amount of pressure in the entire league because you're on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm-hmm. They went to the playoffs with their defense. If you don't perform well in your first year, the pressure is not all there. They heck, they had Mason Rudolph for five years in Pittsburgh. They can have Michael Penix there. One day, Michael Penix is gonna bam, and he's gonna be something special. And they're gonna find their big Ben. Okay. But let me close it out, Nate. Let me close it out with a very special pick, a very a very cool pick, in my opinion. The Dolphins are on the clock, and then. You can say, you can say, Arthur Smith is the OC doesn't do well. Dang, I forgot they freaking signed Arthur Smith. Are you kidding me? Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're gonna keep the mock draft how it is. This is the last pick, the last pick of the night, and then we're gonna do the next next week. I'm gonna close it out, Nate. The Dolphins are on the clock. What position do you think the Dolphins? I mean, you just take a guess. If you played on the Dolphins, you know how it works over there. What are they looking for? If I'm in Miami, I want to sure up defense even more and get some more depth on the defense. Now, am I going to go D-line or am I going to go linebacker? I I personally probably would go linebacker, but D-lineman is always – anybody that can rush the passer because uh, they need depth there. So I'm going to go ahead and go say rush the passer. Unfortunately, Nate, I don't think there's a linebacker that's good enough to be for this pick, which could be picked later in the draft. But I do agree with you that you need defensive depth. Now, they picked up somebody like Jalen Ramsey out of a couple years back, got injured, ended up being the same dog he was when he came back. Well, before Jalen Ramsey gets up in age and you want him to still perform in that cornerback position, Jalen Ramsey can play nickel can play, play the wide out corner. He can play, play it all. Their defense revolves around Jalen Ramsey. But when Jalen Ramsey leaves, you want somebody that can almost take his position because that's what you built your defense around. So let's go to somebody who I think is versatile enough to take that. Give me Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo. Ooh, we saw him Toledo. at the Senior Bowl. Yes, we saw him at the Senior Bowl. He was a dog. Now, there was another dude at the Senior Bowl who – he was very versatile and I loved him so much. But I don't I don't know if he's a first-round guy. Okay. Quinion is. 
Quinion is 100% a first round guy. He okay. stunned everybody at that senior bowl. Like that. That's something different, though, but I like that. I like that right there. This could be the guy who becomes your next Jalen Ramsey. Because let's be honest, how long does Jalen Ramsey have before he stops being able to play that nickel versatile yeah. position? It, it won't be very long. So give me Quinion Mitchell. Give me that to end off picks 11 through 20. We're going to finish up this first round mock draft. And we've got some some pretty good picks. Let me pull out. I got it all written down on note, my notes app on my phone. So let me pull that up real quick. Um, because I have had my mock draft split up into three weeks, there are certain players that after the combine I had saw in the higher second round kind of, but now I see have made their way up to the first round. There's a couple individuals that I originally had in the second round that now I see, hey, they might be late first rounders on their performances. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see some of those, and we're going to see exactly how you agree with those, Nate. Okay. So we had the Dolphins last. That was our last pick. The Dolphins were picked 21. They picked Quinny Mitchell to kind of become that next Jalen Ramsey because Jalen Ramsey's getting up there in age. We need somebody that can be that nickel corner and obviously play every single slot. Cornerback. If you want to play safety, you can. Lad McCon. He he did good. He did good, but he's not a first rounder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No first rounder for Lad. No first rounder for Lad because we're we're gonna get to the first round. And and Nate, you say you say what, but I, I honestly think that is um a little bit of acting on your part because you can't honestly tell me that Lad McCarthy. He, 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 he actually had a great he had, he had a great show. He did, he did. But the thing with the combine, Nate, it, it isn't it isn't a more of pu pushing you up into the first round. It's more of solidifying the pick that you were put mm -hmm. previously. He's a very early second. Yes, I agree. He will be in the second round. Yeah, all right. Let's, all get, right. let's get into it. Let's go. Because I got a special person for this one, and I, I, I thought about it. We have a very, very heavy DB draft, specifically cornerback, and there's a lot of good ones. So for me to pick – dang, I hear them knocking again, but it's not my dorm. Thank goodness. I told him to come back later. Uh, a lot of people's got to take advantage while they can because there's a lot of good CBs coming out of college. They got to take advantage. Uh, he's that good. That's a lot of bias, too. Now, Bookie Watson won SEC Defensive Player of the Year, and he went to Mississippi State, but I'm not about to sit here and tell you that he's a first-round draft pick. He's very good. He won. He beat Dallas Turner out for SEC Defensive Player of the Year, but he's slow. For a linebacker, he will be drafted. I, I digress. You're getting me off track, Rob. So, Philadelphia Eagles are on the clock, Nate. What do the Philadelphia Eagles need? They're losing Fletcher Cox. They're losing Brandon Graham. I don't. I do not think they're going to sign them. They're going to let Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis take the reins at the D tackle position. Do they sign a defensive end? Do they get somebody like that? Well, we saw in that last playoff game where big play slay Darius Slay Mississippi State's own got injured you saw that where he got carted off the field mm -hmm. so in my mind they need somebody and his his injury probably won't go throughout the whole next year for sure it won't be that long but he's getting older they ended up releasing him and then signing him for a much smaller contract before this past season so let's do what the Dolphins just did in the previous pick Let's pick somebody that can sit behind Darius Slay while he is still big play Slay, and let's make somebody big play someone. But what's their first name, Nate? What's your first name, Nate? What's it say on that red, that red part of that shirt of yours? It's Nate. It's, me. it's Nate. So the Philadelphia Eagles pick is in. They pick Nate Wiggins out of Clemson with the number 22 pick. This man has been – He's been locked down. Now, my mom's a big Clemson fan, so I partake in watching Clemson a lot. And so when I see him, he reminds me of a person that was out at Clemson not too long ago. Do you know any um, Atlanta Falcon DBs, Nate, who I might be referring to? Yeah, I know uh, one in particular uh, DB. 
Is he a cornerback? He's a cornerback. Yeah, he um he played um in the national championship. Oh, what's his what's his name, Nate? Oh, Do you remember? Oh. I'm drawing a blank right now. He's a starting yes. he was second team all pro about two or three years ago. Um well, I mean, I can tell you, does the name AJ think. Terrell sound? AJ good? Terrell, yes, AJ Terrell. Yes, and this guy might just be better than AJ Terrell because my mindset is when you have a successful position that goes into the NFL and becomes that successful position, like State, for example, they have they have very successful D tackles in the NFL. Yes, yes. Very, very. So when that becomes a part of the recruiting process, and you DTU. have State and DTU. Ole Miss, for example, DTU. yes, DTU, you are going to pick. Mississippi State over Ole Miss because yeah. you DTU. have seen that, yes, DTU, you have seen that these people have found success in the NFL. If they found success in the NFL going to Mississippi State, why can't I? Nate Wiggins found success at Clemson. A.J. Terrell went to Clemson is finding success in the NFL. Why can't Nate Wiggins find success in the NFL? He can do it. All right, okay. All right, what you got next? What I have next, okay. Who I got next? Who's on the clock next? Who's oh, okay. Clock? So we have a team that has, in my opinion, I, I can't tell it for sure, but as of right now, has obviously won the Deshaun Watson sh- trade. We got a couple first rounders for Deshaun Watson. We maybe got a second rounder, but this first rounder this year was from this trade. And so at 23, we have the Houston Texans yeah. sitting at 23. They got Deshaun Watson uh, traded to Cleveland. They gave him a couple first-rounders. They got C.J. Stroud now kind of balling out. You have a young quarterback who just took you to the playoffs. Yes. Your first instinct in this draft is, how can I build around this quarterback that just took me to the playoffs in his rookie Mm -hmm. season? Because you know that if he can take you to the playoffs his rookie season, he can take you to the playoffs his second year, his third year, his fourth year, and then so on and so forth. How do we protect and surround this quarterback with people that are going to have him be successful so that he can take us into the playoffs every single year and we become those contenders? I'd probably get an offensive lineman to protect him, keep him upright, if there's a good offensive lineman. But Perfect. is there a good offensive lineman? I, I don't know because I, I honestly thought, you know, to be honest with you, when with the Philadelphia Eagles pick, I thought you were going to go center. So I'm, I'm, and I, I might have should have looked at that, but this was before he officially announced okay. his retirement. You know, Let's I go. did a couple changes, Let's but go. look, think about Michael Penix. How good Michael Penix was this past year in college. It was great. Yes, and I agree. The Texans' O-line situation is actually pretty good. And we have seen teams in the past still draft good players even though their situation was good. You have someone like Laramie Tunsil. He's, ve- he's aging, but he's still very good. Um, and I just – I love the fact of having people under your wing. We've seen the Packers do it for years with their quarterbacks, having somebody sit behind the veteran for three years and then coming out and becoming that veteran. Yeah. So let's keep that science with all positions. Okay. This can work with all positions. So give me Troy Faltanu, I knew you tackle out of Washington. I knew it. I knew you was gonna go. And it makes sense because again, when you just made you just hit the, the nail square on, you have a young quarterback. That again, yeah, he took you to the playoffs his rookie year, but okay, okay, well, now we know that we have a team. Now you got to build off of that success because it's not just making it to the playoffs. Playoffs is the the the, the beginning stage, but then you want to win a game in the playoffs. Not only win a game, but you want to go ahead and go to you want to make it to the the next round, and, and the next round after that is the the AFC Championship, and then after the AFC Championship is the Super Bowl. You want to build a team that's a Super Bowl contender. You don't want to build a team kind of like the Dallas Cowboys who is, will make it to the playoffs, but are you – that's a great thing. Don't, and I don't want that to be taken or misconstrued or anything of that sort. But if you're a Cowboy fan, yeah, you're going to make it to the playoffs, but are you playing for something? What are you playing for? You make it to the postseason, that's one thing. But are you a team that's competing for a Super Bowl? That's, that, that, that's the moniker you want to have. 
I love this pick, though. I love it. I appreciate that. So let's get into the next pick. And I'm glad you brought somebody like the Dallas Cowboys up because coincidentally, they're the next pick. They're the next pick. And they're on the clock. So I had I had to think. What was Dallas's number one struggle in this playoff game? Now Dak did throw two picks. I mean, but yeah, it was a couple of things. But it was a couple of things, though. You know what? To be honest with you, it was a couple of things. Um, defensively, they they couldn't stop the run. They couldn't. The, Dallas is a fast team that can, that is a team that likes to play from ahead, play with a lead. But when they're a team that has to come back, you know, their DNA gets exposed and whatnot. So it's a lot of things, you know, offensively, you know, they, they weren't that good offensively in the playoffs and whatnot. And they they have a Jekyll and Hyde type of ordeal when they're clicking, they're clicking. But the identity of this offense is, is, is hit or miss. Sometimes it's lukewarm. Sometimes they're hot. You know, when they get going, they can get going, but no running game, no nothing. I mean, I don't, it's a lot of things. This is my mindset, Nate. If it ain't broke, fix it. Don't fix it. They were red hot in this regular season. Dak, arguably, I think should have won MVP. Yeah. You know, Lamar Jackson is the only person that's won MVP in NFL history that was not top ten in in any quarterback stat. Quarterback stat, yeah, yeah, that's insane to me. And and we're gonna do a breakdown episode later on in MVP snubs because I need to brand about that later because I was looking at it. Um, you pick the one thing that took you out of a Super Bowl contention ship. And that one thing was not being able to stop the run. Mm -hmm. So what do you get that is able – that can aid you in stopping that run? Because you couldn't do it with that def- – for some reason that defense – you, ta- you need a D-tackle. You need a D-tackle or a linebacker. Really, it's a D-tackle. D-tackle penetration. Um, they can clog up run run gaps and, and, and just push the linemen into the, the running backs. Excuse me, that's Nemo. He's really happy to be right here. <laughs> um, that's the thing right there. D-tackle. So, D-tackle, maybe. I like the D-tackle aspect. Is there a D-tackle deserving enough for pick 24? I don't know. So my mind, my mindset for this one, Nate, their pick is in. They don't pick a D-tackle, but they pick somebody that is versatile enough to do it all. They pick Edron Cooper, linebacker out of Texas A&M, and this guy I was talking about earlier. Yes, this guy can spot the ball, and much like Buk- Buki at State, he can spot the ball. He knows how to get to it. He knows how to disrupt the pass. He knows how to stuff a run. He just knows football. Yeah, he's just he's a football when, player. He's a football player. When he sees the football, he goes. It doesn't. He goes to it. It doesn't matter if it's in the running back's hand, the quarterback's hand. The wide receiver's hands, he knows what's going on when and where the ball is. So the Cowboys not only fix a running issue, but they fix a defensive issue at that. Because if you don't want this guy run, uh, being a run stuffer, you don't have to because he can disrupt a pass. If you can do vir- virtually anything you want with this guy, he's a puzzle piece that may fit to complete the puzzle you need to go farther in the playoffs. And if it doesn't fit, then put him somewhere that fits. Because you got more than one piece to complete a puzzle. Okay. And All this right. might just be many of them. All right. All right. Pick. Okay. So next pick, um, like I said, very cornerback heavy draft. So the Dallas Cowboys are on the, on the clock. I just – besides Jair Alexander, I don't see any help. Much in that, and then um, the Packers traded Rasul Douglas to the Bills, I think. And who who's their safeties? I can't even think of their safeties. What the Bills? The the Packers. The Packers. Who are the Packers oh, safeties? I should have looked at that before I even because it, it doesn't even MJ would know, and I hate that. And I hope MJ doesn't pop on. MJ don't pop on if you can hear. Okay, it's Darnell Sa- Savage and um and Jonathan Owens. Okay, first of all, Jonathan Owens is a a very media click player. I don't think I've seen him be outstanding like Jair. And I'm not trying to dog on Jonathan Islands. You know, he's a uh, Simone Biles' husband. So we gotta, yeah, we gotta, we gotta be, we gotta be nice to him because of all the, all the things. And Darnell Savage is good. I, I like, I like 
Oh, he's on the way out. Okay, which makes my pick even more deserving. Okay, thank you, Jack, for giving us that. That which makes my my pick even more deserving. So mm-hmm. besides Jair, I don't see anything outstanding in that secondary. There's okay. not something that clicks with me in that secondary. So let's fill it up. So the Cowboy Cowboys, the Packers pick Cooper DeGene, quarterback out of Iowa. I think he's the next best uh, cornerback on this draft class. Iowa had a top defense this year, and he was a piece in that defense. And so the Packers see that. Hey, who was a contributor in that big, big Iowa defense they had this past college football season? Cooper DeGene. We won him. We got him. We're going to make him outstanding. Pick number 25 to the Packers. Jack says the perfect Packer. Finally, a pick Jack likes. A pick Jack likes in my mock draft. Thank you, Jack. Okay, Nate, you want to go to the next one? What do you think about that pick? You like it or you don't like it? You indifferent. Yeah, you you indifferent or you just you just really don't have an opinion. I, don't. You. I think it's a solid pick. It could be a solid pick. It can be a solid pick. Can be. Okay, it we'll see what happens. Pick, okay, next pick. 2026 20, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I actually looked at this, and originally I had a cornerback here. But after reading and, and thinking and, and looking at stuff, I was like, man, there's a guy on here that I think made it into the first round that I did not originally have. Yeah, right, that I did not originally have in this draft class. So instead of defense, what I originally thought the Buccaneers were going to pick, because they have uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. They don't know if they're going to franchise tag him or not. I feel like they're trying to have negotiations with him. No, Antoine, they, they did. They did. They did. They finally, okay, finally they did it. Okay. I didn't know they if they did, did or not. I started thinking, I mean, they just gave Mike Evans a bunch of money. They gave him $52 million for two years, I think $36 million guaranteed. Worth every, worth every penny. And Chris Godwin, Chris Godwin was very, very good, and he's just been – I don't know what happened to Chris Godwin. So let me introduce you to the Buccaneers' new star wide receiver. For pick right. number 26, the Buccaneers select – I don't even know how to pronounce it. I don't know. Mitchell. Yeah, out of Texas. AD Mitchell was nice. He had, and, a, and, um, he had a really good – he had a good showing. Yes. Show. Rob four, should four, like four, this three. pick. Running four three, um, you know what? You know, a good hands, uh, nice. Uh, I think it was eleven foot uh, standing broad jump, thirty nine on the vertical. Um, I was very very impressed with his showing. I think that's a great pick. And and I was impressed with Xavier Worthy and his, his record breaking oh, forty yard yeah. dash. But you can't my mindset speed. is you you can't. But we look at somebody like John Ross who had the record previously. Not as good as we thought he was going to be. Not as good. Yeah. So you can't you can't teach speed, but you can't solely go off speed. Oh, yeah. So I don't have I I like Xavier Worthy. His routes are good. He's a little small in my opinion, smaller in my opinion, but my favorite guy in the entire. Okay. Right. Yes. So that that that's my pick number twenty six. The pick. Okay? The pick. Twenty seven. Okay. Texans trade up to number three. To get Will Anderson last draft, Cardinals had number three. They traded back and said, okay, the Texans are probably going to be a higher pick this next season. They're not going to be good. They're rebuilding. They can't be good, right? That's just a, that's just a, the rebuilding process, right? Well, they ended up being number 27 in the draft this season. So the Arizona Cardinals had the 27th draft, uh, draft pick. And I started thinking, who do they need? And I had a center here. Uh, Because I thought a center would be a good pick here. But because of how versatile tackles are nowadays, if you want a center, you can make them another lineman. And there's not somebody in this draft besides uh, Mims from Georgia that I think should be here other than J.C. Latham out of Alabama. If you want a center, if you want a center, you can make one. They say if you got lemons, make lemonade. Well, Arizona Cardinals, I'm giving you lemons. It is your decision if you want to make lemonades, if you want to make lemon meringue pie. You choose. You pick and choose. If you want him to be a tackle, what? We'll see. 
He's a run game bully, and Mims is better in Rob's opinion. But we're gonna see. I I hate that I I'm gonna say it right now. I snubbed Mims from this list, and I hated that because I really really liked him, and especially in his combine. But these next five picks, Nate, you're gonna see why I snubbed him from this list. And right. pick number pick next is the Buffalo Bills are on the clock. Ooh, we on the clock, Buffalo. Let's yes, Buffalo's on the clock. They had somebody like Gabe Davis decided to leave. You don't know how long, much longer, in fact, Stefan Diggs is going to stay in Buffalo. You don't. You saw Mr. Heisman winner Jaden Daniels get picked in the top three this, this earlier in the day in this draft. Who contributed to his success? Okay, well, Malik Neighbors, but he's off the list. Uh, is it an O-lineman that helped him out? Is it another wide receiver? Nate, there were some – two stud wide receivers in LSU this year. And the Buffalo Bills just so happened to pick the second one. Brian Thomas Jr. at hey, wide receiver you know out of what? LSU. Give me him for Buffalo. I hadn't I hadn't been seeing, you know, where because he was a, a really, really good counterpart for Malik Nate on the other side of Malik Neighbors. If uh that was that's his name, right? Uh Malik Neighbors. Yes. LSU other LSU, yeah. They were both a really, really good tandem. So I like this pick. I really do. But let's I see do. how well he can compliment Stefan Diggs on the other side. Let's see yeah. how well he can do that. So give me Brian Thomas. I think he'll be a good compliment. Be what the Great Bills need. Which brings me to one of my favorite picks. Might be my favorite pick in this draft. The yeah, like Detroit the Lions. Ending, the ending, the ending of the draft. The ending of uh, excuse me, the ending of the first round. All right, let's see. Yes, the Detroit Lions are notorious for doing unpredictable, making unpredictable moves in this first round. So I thought like a Detroit Lion for a second. I thought like Dan Campbell. They picked Jameer Gibbs, who was not even close to being scouted in the first round last last draft, maybe the second round. And they ended up picking him at like number 12 or whenever they picked him. I can't remember. But let's let's think about that again. Let's think about somebody who's really, really good but might not necessarily be picked in the first round. You have someone like Aiden Hutchinson on one on one end of your line, and you're like, well, I don't really need another end because I have him. Or do you? You just stocked up. You signed David Montgomery before the draft, but you still ended up drafting Jameer Gibbs. You studded up on your running backs. Let's stud up on defensive ends. Mm-hmm. Let's stud up on defensive ends. A man who was instrumental in this Cotton Bowl win versus Ohio State. Detroit Lions picked Darius Robinson, defensive end out of Missouri. To pair up with Aiden Hutchinson, he's a bad man. I've seen him in person, Nate. He is huge. I thought you were going to go more D-tackle. Um, I I was I had the sense of D-lineman. I did have the sense of D-lineman. Um, I was talking to a, 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 a friend, Antoine, and I told him, like, you know, I will be I will tackle um, somebody that can actually help Aiden Hutchinson, that can actually take off, like, you know, take the focus off of him, and he can get more one-on-ones and, and so forth and whatnot. But I love this pick. And, and you're right. Like, okay, why don't you pick a D-tackle? Well, let's think about it. If you have a one really strong one side and not a very strong other side, what's going to happen? You're going to end up getting double teamed on one side, and then the other side is just going to be able yeah. to get one on one easily. But if you have two really strong players on either side of the line, you might get double teamed those both players, but it's going to cause those weaker players on the inside to slip through and maybe make a play. So it's just the way the schemes works in Detroit. I think this is a good pick. Give me Darius Robinson yep. in Detroit. And I'm gonna tell you, I was on that. I was on that Detroit roster. Uh, we made it to the playoffs, um, you know, both years. And you know, we had Indomitian Sue, we had Nick Fairley, we had Ziggy Ansa, Jason Jones, C.J. Mosley. We had a nasty D line, and you couldn't. You had to pick your poison about who you were gonna double team, because one on one with 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 those specimens. Oh man. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Connor. I apologize. But I agree. You pick your poison, and all, sometimes you might pick the poison that kills you. Yeah. And we're going to leave it at that. 
So let's pick. Let's let's get to. Oh, okay, the Ravens are next. I thought about this, and I just have to default to how good this defensive back class is. How and originally I had Kool Aid McKinstry here because I just love his name and I felt like he might he might sneak into the first round. I said no. Let's not put Kool Aid there. That is more of an emotional pick than a than a logical pick. Let's pick somebody that fulfills this sure. Ravens defense needs. Now we just saw Darius Robinson picked. Mm-hmm. A defense is not good with just one really good player. You have multiple pieces yeah, to the puzzle. Right. So who was another contributor to that Missouri defense? And it's crazy that I'm picking Missouri, Missouri back to back. And this guy is a bad dude. He's a bad dude. And the Ravens love picking their bad dudes. I mean, you saw Ray Rice, right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Don't cancel me. Don't cancel me. Oh, Jack, I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. Give me Rake Straw Jr., cornerback out of Missouri. And Jack said it better than better better than I could. Feels the Ravens very, needs. Very competitive. Very competitive. Good good player. Good player. We'll be able to plug him in and, and, and just really be able to get his feet wet instantaneously. So that's a good pick. In these next two picks, 32 I had locked in of who I thought was going to pick 32. 31. I had to switch around a little bit because of how good I saw this guy at the senior bowl, because of how good I just saw him perform at the combine, I moved him up the first round, deservingly so. The San Francisco 49ers are on the clock. And originally I thought they were going to pick a tackle or or a center here, and I was like, do they need an O-lineman? Is that something that they want to pick the first round? And I thought I kept thinking no. I want to say O-lineman, but no. They're not going to pick an O-lineman. They're going to pick – they just they they just signed all these defensive players on their roster to have that depth, and all of them are basically gone now. So let's let's keep that depth going. Let's pick a man who was on one team during the Senior Bowl. Got a call the morning of the game. Said, "Hey, can you swap teams for the game? Are you going to be able to learn this next defensive scheme and be able to get plugged in?" Yeah, coach, I can do that. This man's a bad dude. Ended up transferring. His story is amazing. Successful ball player. Give me Braden Fiske. Oh, he yeah, tackle yeah. out of Florida State. You know what? I thought he was more of a second round guy, depending depending. I thought so too. Team. I like him. I like him. Until I until I saw him learn a totally and he didn't just learn yeah, the yeah. entire defensive scheme, Nate. He won defensive player. Defensive player for yeah. their team, he won that award as the best defensive player for their team, and he was on the team the morning of the game. And then I saw him show out in the combine, and I was like, you know what? That's just the lock for me. I got to put him in the top, and he mm-hmm. might be. The, he's still in the first round. He still gets first round money. Pick number thirty one. Give me Fisky. Gotcha. And so this next pick, Nate, I thought about it, and I thought how nasty this guy might be on the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champs, because they just released Marquez valdez Scantling, And there's somebody that I think would just be nasty on here. You know, you just you got to take a chance when you see one. This is a chance that the Kansas City Chiefs know how to take. And if it doesn't work out, you just saw Patrick Mahomes win a Super Bowl with the 29th best wide receiver core in the league. Mm-hmm. So – Let's 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 help Patrick Mahomes out. What's the initials of Kansas City, Nate? KC. KC, right? So the pick is in, Nate. Who has the initials KC that you can think of off the top of your head? Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. How about Keon Coleman, wide receiver out of Florida State? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. You know, he actually he balled out like before the quarterback. He was balling out before their quarterback got hurt. Um, this guy was special. Now, my buddy is a big Florida State fan, and we just picked Missouri, Missouri, Florida State, Florida State. No matter what team they went to, as long as they're a good player. He said, when they, you know, you have, if you want one on one and the quarterback chucks it up, it's a jump ball, right? It's a, right. it's whoever can get to it first. 
he said that a, it's not called a jump ball when Keon Coleman's in the area. It's called a Keon Coleman ball when Keon Coleman's in the area one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And so I started looking. You you want to say I'm Jordan during this show. Look at Keon Coleman. Look at how high Keon Coleman can jump on those jump balls. So the Kansas City Chiefs, they really put the KC in Kansas City, and they take Keon Coleman to end off the first round. Get on their head. I like it. And then okay, and that's okay. it. Okay. Oh, he was on Michigan State's basketball team, what Jack said. <laughs> I didn't know that. It makes sense. I like it. I like it. But I, okay. I appreciate you dedicating time for me to go over these picks throughout the past couple weeks. It's been a pleasure, and I'm very appreciative of it.